Pixies go to fixie schools and study to be masters. There's so much they need to learn to save us from disasters. There is a one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let the secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let the secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let the secret out. The airbag. We're gonna be late. We'll make it. I'm a super duper racer. <laughs> well, well, fire. Again, risking your life. <laughs> and super racers like me can always count on luck. You know, fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt. Because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection. Like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grandpoos, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah, but how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag, and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Ah! <laughs> We've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, or riding a scooter. First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, Make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! He needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid. As you fixies say, Dish. Today's lesson is done. Hooray! Come on! 
Where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> Is that airbag cool or what? It's a very original design to use there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so... Caution and care make accidents rare. <laughs> Tom Thomas isn't here. There's no way these toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long, and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik! Why in the world would you shoot at a Fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean, short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> Nolik, now push. <laughs> All right. Yes! Right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly. Ha <laughs> ha! Right out the window. Right up to the moon. First fixin' onto the world, Nolik. Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir. Nolik, get out of the spoon now. I'll be the first fixie on the moon. Yeah! Nolik, enough of this. What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all. He's gonna fly into space. And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter. Hold on. Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah. Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times, but people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? 
Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So, let's do it. Fire, launch it. Stop, don't. Simka, Nolik. I'm not getting out. Just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? <sighs> oh, Tom Thomas, that door of yours squeaks terribly. Yeah, and it's not easy to open either. Well, that's because the hinges are rubbing. That's why your door is not working right. How can I fix it? Just reduce the amount of friction. How? With some oil on the hinges. I can do it for you, because I've got a pack of mat All right. Simka, can I help you? Sure you can. Wear the pack of mat all right? Friction is the force that tries to stop something from sliding or rubbing smoothly against something else. Rubbing can make things wear out quickly if there's a lot of friction. If you want less friction, you need to put something on the parts that rub against each other, like oil. There are special kinds of grease used to keep clocks and wheels turning smoothly. And for skis, a special kind of wax can be used to make them go even faster. Now the top hinge. It's all done. Go ahead and check how it's working. It's not squeaking. I told you. You guys are the best. I gotta go. Go where? I'm gonna go sledding. Maybe you'll take me with you? Uh, sorry, Nolik. You don't have a sled to ride on. I'll see you later. Simka, should I grease the saucer? What for? It'll slide down the hill just the way it is. Ah, okay then. Um, wait here for me, Nolik. I'll be back real soon with a surprise for you. Yeah, oil oh, slippery. I know what I'll do. Just stay where you are. I'll be right there. Papus! Papus! Help us, please! Who called for me? Help is on the way! Hey, what are you up to? Grandpa, stay away from here! You'll fall over! Hey? What did you say? Stay where you are! Uh, oh, uh. What happened here? I poured some oil on the table. Why'd you do that? To reduce friction. That's brilliant. Nobody move. I know exactly what to do. <laughs> What was the problem you had with the friction? I want to see all of this oil gone in five minutes. <sighs> Engineers are in a constant battle with the force of friction. They want less friction so that cars will run faster and their parts will wear out less quickly. But just imagine what the world would be like if all of a sudden there was simply no friction at all. Everything would start slipping out of our hands and falling off the table. Knots would untie themselves, and that's not the half of it. Cars wouldn't be able to run without friction either. Wheels would spin around and around in one place, unable to grab onto the road. 
we wouldn't even be able to walk. Because when we walk, we move forward by pushing off the ground with our feet. And how can we do that without friction? We can't. So now I think you can see why it's not so bad to have a little bit of friction in our lives. Whew. We cleaned it. But it's still so stinky. <gasps> no, like, I completely forgot. I promised you a surprise. Look. What is it? I made you your very own saucer for sledding. Oh, that's great! Only, what good is this thing without snow? Nolik, hey! Look what I've got for you! Snow? Yeah. Is it real snow? Really? Yep. Now you've got your very own hill to sled on. This is great! What an awesome surprise! And you don't need oil to make it go quickly. fine here, too. I wish something would break for a change. It's already been a week and nothing's broken in here. Stop worrying. Everything breaks at some point. Well, nothing seems to ever break inside of this house. That's because we take such good care of it. No, Masya, it's boring with no real work to do. We should move somewhere else. When Fixies graduate from school, they must choose the place where they want to work. Some will work at factories, and some on ships, and some in theaters, and some in hospitals, too. Fixies are needed everywhere. Now, Fixie families with children like to choose places that are a bit quieter. Usually, they'll settle inside of people's houses. It's not too noisy there, like in a factory, but there's still plenty of work to do. They need to check on appliances like computers, vacuum cleaners, telephones, irons, and washing machines. And Fixies always try their best. They just love being busy with work. And so, if there's nothing broken in the house, Fixie families will move to a new place where there's much more work to be done. Nolik, did you hear that? Uh, I don't want to move anywhere. But think about the kids, dear. They've got their school and friends here. Do you like this friend of theirs? A human kid playing with Fixie kids. You know as well as I that it's just not right. <sighs> All right, then. If nothing's broken down before the end of the day, that's all. We gotta move. Oh, no, I can't. Tom Thomas comes home the day after tomorrow, and we'd be gone by then. Pull yourself together. And I won't see him anymore at all? No, like, I have an idea. <laughs> what, what idea? If something happens to break down before the end of the day, then we're not moving. But what if nothing breaks? Calm down. We're gonna make sure of it. Suka, you're a genius. But how can we make sure of it? We're going to use a crowbar. A crowbar is powerful and simple. It's nothing more than a heavy metal bar with either sharp or flat ends. It can be very helpful for breaking through concrete or ice. It can also be used as a lever to root out a tree stump or move a boulder. If one end of the bar has a claw cut into it, then it's good for pulling out nails. Yes, sometimes the simplest tools are the most powerful ones. Do we have that tool? We've got our pack -a mat And it's got everything. And second, you gotta break it in some way that can be fixed later. Did someone say something needs fixing? <clears throat> or am I hearing things? Papas, we just found out that the uh, television broke.
broken down. Are you sure? Yeah. And one of the keys on the keyboard is stuck. For real? For real. And the clock's not running either. Oh, ho! Masya, our life is getting back on the right track. Should we fix them? Yeah, what else? We are the Fixies. We live to keep on working, and work for us is fun. So we'll just keep on working, because our work's never done. And deep inside of gadgets, if you look when it's dark, you might just see us race around like multicolored sparks. One, two, three. Tanish! Inside will be... Tanish! To fix what's wrong. Tanish! To live on strong. One, two, three. Tanish! Inside will be Tadish all day and night. Tadish, we fix things right. Tadish, Tadish. Oh, that was a lot to do. You'd almost think that somebody broke it on purpose. Well, we didn't do it. It broke by itself. Yeah, this apartment still needs a lot of work. We shouldn't move anywhere. I like it here. So do I. It's the best. See, we don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right there and let me see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye-bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with this camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture. You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo apparatsis. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. The monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. 
And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simganolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. We're not in that shot. We're not there either. <laughs> well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one, and you're in it. I know for sure. Look! I'm zooming in. It's impossible. I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> Paparazzi. And what are you going to do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it, after every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. Well, then, now you know what you need to do to fix it. <laughs> Professor? Professor? Our lesson is over. I'm sorry to be a bother. No problem, Professor Eugenius. Our lesson's over. I've got an urgent matter. You see? Mama, what is that? You've got yourself a talking doll. Yes, only she speaks Japanese. The problem is I've been asked to get her to talk in English. We can teach her. It's a new technology. I'm puzzled. Don't you worry. We'll figure it out, Professor. Thank you, my colleague. You're always there when I need it. What would I do without you? Professor, can you tell us how toys talk? Not now, children. We'll learn about the doll tomorrow. Now it's time to go home. I already know everything about that doll. You do? Changing her voice is so easy that anyone can do it. How? Here, come, I'll show you. talking dolls used to work with a noisemaker inside. When the doll was turned over, air inside the noisemaker got pushed through a squeaker at the end of it, making a noise that sounded like the word mama. Mama. <laughs> Funny. Today, the noises are recorded onto an electronic chip that's part of a little player inside of the doll. Just press a button and the sounds start playing. So now dolls can say much more than just mommy or daddy. They can say anything at all. Well, here's the chip. This is where the recording of the doll's voice is. That's awesome. Can you re-record the voice on there? Well, yeah. Okay, I gotta go. Uh, uh. See ya. Wait, Nolik, I thought of a really funny joke to pull. What if we slipped him and then we thought and there was a thing? Uh-huh. Well, now, as I promised yesterday, I'm going to tell you all about talking dolls. Some start talking when you rock them, while others react to noise. And for this little lady, you need to press a button to get her to talk. Who wants to? Dula. Me? Well, okay. I can do it. Go ahead. And you'll hear her say, hi there, mama. <laughs> but in Japanese for now. Tula! Is that Japanese for hi there? Tula! Why are you hiding a picture of Digi in an alpaca mat? <laughs> How could she ever know that? Maybe your love? That doll is alive! They call that joking. I just thought of a better joke that we can play. Yeah. What? Tula, don't cry. She's not alive. She is alive. I'll tell you who did this horrible thing. It was Fire and Nolan. Uh -huh. It's true, but now the joke will be on them. How? It's easy. All we gotta do is go. 
the smartest Fixie in our class is Digit. Sometimes I think that he knows everything about everything. Professor Grandpus has a lot of respect for him. Digit's always in thought whenever you see him, and he doesn't like when anyone distracts him. He just has no time for fooling around with the other boys. Digit prefers to solve problems using his brains and not his muscles. That's why he can have a tough time in gym class. But he's so sweet that it makes you want to help him. To tell you the truth, Digit isn't always great fixing things with his own hands. But no one understands technology better than he does. If something breaks, Digit can always figure out exactly what's wrong with it and the very best way to fix it. You're gonna make it even funnier this time. Uh-huh. You came back? What? You Must troublemakers. Be. Now I'll show you what, what happens to bad boys who hurt girls' feelings. Oh, oh you got scared. <laughs> <laughs> Who's crying now, huh? They probably thought that the doll came to life. You know what, Digit? I just started thinking that it, it might be better if she were alive. You know, Tula, you sure are hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> it's about me. Fixies? No, it's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <sighs> Chusaka, I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good dog, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? Whoa, whoa. Come on out. I see you. <laughs> no, like, jump down. <laughs> oh, no. We're trapped in here. Alert. Something's burning over there. Why won't they listen? I think she's going to eat us. Together with the box. <laughs> We're done for. Oh, come on, look! The outlet is sparking! Oh, no! Something must have broken in there! Are we going to fix it? Kids should never touch outlets, and you know it, too! It's forbidden! Then how do we fix it? Go find Papus, and I'll stay here and wait for you! Uh, but where's Papus? I know where he is! I don't know what she's barking about, but I think Chusaka wants to help us! Then come on, Chusaka! Help us! He's in there! Papus! Papus! Nolan, is that you? Uh -huh. There's an outlet sparking over there, and it smells like it's burning. Are you sure? Yeah, Chusaka found it. Really? Great job! <laughs> there are many kinds of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. 
Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. <laughs> Yeah, that's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Uh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Atta girl, Chusaka. Well done. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. Oh, finally, they understand me. Hmm. How about that? <laughs> then I'll play my part. And I'll play my part. <laughs> Grandpa's, we need our spool, and it's missing. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Professor, have you seen it anywhere? The spool? I haven't seen it. We're playing chess, can't you see? Do you like board games? Like dominoes, for instance. Just about everybody has played it. But do you know where it came from? Dominoes was invented by the ancient Chinese. They made tiles and decorated them with dots like on a pair of dice. And this is a game that looks a lot like checkers, but it's a lot more challenging. It's called backgammon. Backgammon originated in Persia, and from there it spread all over the world. But the most challenging game of them all is the game of chess. Chess was invented in India, and today the game of chess is loved in every country. It's played by adults, by children, and even by computers. Chess is a real sport. But the most important thing for playing chess is not the power in your arms, but the power in your brain. Hey, look! I found it! Yeah. Uh, hey! What's going on? <gasps> That's our spool! Please let us take it back. There's something we have to do with it. But we're using it. Can't you wait? It's a replacement for the missing pawn. Uh, oh! Nola can work for a while as the pawn's replacement. Yeah! I can do it. All right. You can take it. And you stand right over here. One, two, three, up we go! Class! So how do we play? You're going to play for the whites. And now I'm going to capture your knight. And we... We're gonna knock over yours. Take that! Whoa, 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 young man. Slow down. It goes back here. Get back to your square. What for? Pawns don't move like that. Then how do they move? Only one square per move and only forward. <laughs> of all of the pieces, the little pawn is the weakest. What a mess. So which one's strongest, huh? This. It's the queen. She's the most dangerous threat to the other king. Aw, how come I couldn't be queen? Then that black king would have to deal with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> In chess, each player has a black or white army with eight pawns, two knights, two bishops, two castles, and a queen. All of them work together for their king, trying to protect him while attacking the enemy's king. If the king finds himself in a position where he can be captured, the attacking player says check. And if the king finds himself with nowhere to run from the attack, it's called checkmate. Whoever checkmates the other player's king first is the winner. Move my queen. Yeah. And me, my queen. Huh. Then 
then I'll just capture your queen. Aha! Really? Then I'll just capture yours. Grandpus, should I go now? Not yet. So, do you feel like surrendering? Ha! Huh, you're kidding. Do you? Nolik, forward! Hooray! We'll step aside. Forward! Aha! Next I'll go and capture the knight. He got away. All right, Pornin, once more. Go forward. Gra Grandpus, where do I go now? Don't you see the edge? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> now you're the queen. What? The rules of chess say that if a pawn makes it all the way to the other side, he can become anything that was captured earlier. Hooray! Then I'll be the queen, and I'll be the strongest piece in the whole game. Hey, queen! Get back here! In case you don't know, this isn't over yet. <laughs> we capture the pawn with the queen. Queen, this is your new place. Check. Check. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Now come to here. Checkmate, my colleague. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it is, mate. Yeah, I lost. <laughs> Hooray! Tadish, Tadish, Tadish! <laughs> Professor, we found the missing pawn for you. So that means Nola can leave with us. I'm not going anywhere with you. Chess is the greatest game you'll ever play in your life. All you should have seen how I put Professor Eugenius into checkmate. Really? Well, Grandpa's helped me a little. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was Grandpa's telling me where to move. <gasps> but I'm the queen now. <laughs> Fixies, why are you so sad? Christmas is just around the corner. Maybe it'll be a lot of fun for you, but not. Why is that? Masi and Papus had a quarrel. Over what? Every year we've got to repair those string lights. Oh, yeah, it's awful. Christmas is almost here and there's still so much work to be done. What do you think of that? <laughs> and this! <laughs> here you are. You don't hear the phone ring, you don't answer messages, and we have string lights that aren't working right. We need help. Papus, can't you give us a few more minutes? You said that an hour ago. Haven't you wasted enough time? We are not wasting time! Look in the camera! What? Boop. <laughs> Got one of Masia? Look! <laughs> there you are. So, having a good time? Um, we were just about to leave and... You can stay right here. I've already done everything myself. You obviously have more important things to take care of. Uh, <gasps> so you left me over there, by myself, working my tail off, just so you can play? Where are you going? To relax. Oh, yeah? Fine with me. So now we won't have... Christmas. Don't panic, Nolik. We'll get your parents to forget. I, I mean, to forgive each other. How? My dad always says that the way to a woman's heart is to give flowers and candy. And where are we going to find flowers right now? Oh, we'll make them out of marshmallows. People are always trying to improve recipes. The French used an ancient Egyptian mallow root recipe to create the marshmallow, a fluffy dessert that can decorate a cake or be roasted on an open fire. In Russia, pureed fruit and berries were mixed with egg whites and sugar and then whipped together to create their own fluffy dessert, zephyr. Some ingredients have changed over the years, but these old desserts are still popular. What will they think of next? We're gonna set him up on a date. <laughs> Masia is calling for you. It's urgent. Tom Thomas's uh, monitor isn't working. I thought she handles everything herself now. Papu, you're always so kind and love helping others. Come on. Eh. <sighs> All right. No, no, and no. I'm relaxing. I told you. But Tom Thomas won't have time to make his mom's card if you don't go, and then she'll end up without a present. 
Fine, I'll go. But I'm only going for his mom's sake. Sweets aren't just for eating. They can also be used to decorate a Christmas table. For instance, it's very easy to make this Christmas tree out of marshmallows. Make a row of marshmallows at the bottom of a plate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The second row has six of them. The third row, five. Then there's four, three, two, and a special one on top. Add breadsticks at the bottom as a trunk and sprinkle the plate with some sweet confetti. There, it's ready. With the help of some little cookie cutters, it's possible to make hearts and snowflakes out of marshmallows. Or you could make a reindeer. Put a candy cane through a marshmallow, use sugar beads for eyes and a nose, and pretzels for antlers. Beautiful, right? Merry Christmas! Hmm, I don't get what's going on. The monitor's working. What did you call me for? Uh, I didn't call. Hmm, and you've got nothing for me to do here. No. Ah, then I guess you came to apologize? Uh, no. You know what? I have had enough. Uh, well... Huh? What's it say? For Masya? Uh... For me? Yeah, for you. <laughs> That's so sweet. I hope you can forgive me for yelling at you. I'm just tired. No, I should apologize. It was bad of me to leave you alone. And where are the children? It's almost Christmas. There you are. Come here. Papu, Masya! Woohoo! Oh, my sweetie! Yeah. Hooray! Hooray! Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Show off, Dara. And one. Ha! Check that out. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's a shame Fire didn't see that. I'm just uh, training for school. You're the one that's doing all these twists and turns for Fire. Hmm, me? It never even crossed my mind. No, like slow down. <sighs> Tula, why don't we go and play some chess? Don't you think that figure skating's beautiful? Turn me! Uh. How cool! <laughs> oh, why did you yell like that? I just got a pair of tickets to see the one and only Vector. <gasps> Splendid! And who's going with you? Actually, I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. What's there to think about? Just invite the most beautiful girl in our school, right? Yeah, not a bad idea, my friend. Did you hear that? The most beautiful one will get invited. Well, I'm not even interested. And you know what? Neither am I. Our world is full of beauty. There seems to be no end to the beautiful plants and animals and the gorgeous mountains, forests, and lakes. But even that's not enough for people. They create their own handmade beauty, too. Artists paint beautiful pictures. Composers write beautiful music. Architects create beautiful buildings. And fashion designers make beautiful clothes. Not even scientists stay out of it. They create beautiful ideas. These ideas can be the basis for the creation of new technologies that make people's lives better. Everyone has their own idea of what's beautiful. There are as many opinions as there are people. But everyone tries in their own way to be beautiful. Both people and fixies. Please help me, Tula. How can I become beautiful? Huh. I don't know. Go and ask Verda. Look at her. She's got it. What has she got? What's the most beautiful thing about her? Oh, well, her hairpin, her hairstyle. The green looks great on her. Green looks great. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, see you later. Hmm? Tula. Huh? What's your opinion? Fire, do you think he likes Simka? Looks like he does. Is it because she's a redhead? Orange. Hmm, now I get it. Well, is that close to her color? Not really. It needs more green. <laughs> What 
makes a person really beautiful. Fancy clothing, bright nail polish, dyed hair, those don't make you look your best. Here's a much more reliable recipe. First, wash up and comb your hair. See, you're looking more beautiful already. Now change those dirty and wrinkly clothes for clean ones. Huh? That's even more beautiful. And finally, if you eat less sweets and get plenty of exercise, then you'll surely become a handsome boy <laughs> or a gorgeous girl. Fire? What's up? Do you think you could get an autograph from Vector for me? You got it. I love his song so much. So do I. Especially that one that goes... Computer, 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 you are super. I play my computer and turn it up real loud. I play it all morning, all day, and through the nighttime. But no, 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 that's not allowed. <laughs> I had no idea you were such a fanatic. You know, I'm not going to get you his autograph. Why won't you? Because you'll get it yourself. You know what I got? An extra ticket. <gasps> I thought you were going to take the most beautiful girl. All of you are beautiful, and you're the most fun to be around. Let's go. Stop! Hang on! Oh, Simba? Or is it Verda? Where are you going? What do you mean, where? To the concert. <gasps> mm. <gasps> Verda? No, Simka. Or vice versa. I'm so confused. Come on, Tula. Can't you recognize them? This one's Simka, that one's Verda. Let's go, or we'll be late. Hmm. Blondes are always the lucky ones. Yeah. I guess we should have made our hair blonde like Tula's. Pisa, do you want a cracker? Wow. Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka Nolik. This is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <laughs> <gasps> I can't believe it. You've got a real parrot. Can he talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say, Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik. That's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. Check it out! It looks like he knows how to speak dog. No, no, like, he doesn't know any languages at all. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it. Fixie's had a special sign. Tadish. Oh, my dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm. Adisa, how are you? This is a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. <laughs> hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no. He was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? <laughs> Let's hide, quickly. <gasps> hide. Uh, we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <sighs> Fixies have a special sign. <gasps> oh! Fixies have a special sign. Oh! What? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. 
Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know, how special physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. Whew. The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone, what you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. Adisa, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no word. Okay? Yeah, nothing about the Fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. So if you meet a Fixie, please, don't let their secret out. Tadish, Tadish, Tadish! <laughs> <laughs>